Oh, stretch. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I probably should have done that before. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today's video is a Q&A and this time I am answering all of your questions seeking advice. So I had loads of questions about non-monogamy, kink, relationships, all of that good stuff that I love talking about. So I'm just gonna go through and answer some of those now. If you're more interested in hearing me overshare in quite in quite a way about my own life then there's a separate video with all that stuff in uh it's pretty juicy i'm just really taking i i coined myself a professional oversharer and i'm just taking that title very seriously so go and enable me and watch that video too but yeah let's get into it so i'm just gonna go straight away so we can fit in as many questions as possible the first question is my husband got drunk and kissed another woman i found it a turn on would love to include other people in our sex life. He's traumatized by the ordeal. How do I tell him I have no problem with him fucking other people without sounding crazy? Oh, don't you just love it when something happens in life to just take you on a completely different path and just unlocks something within you that you had no idea was there? I love that. I love that and I find that that happens so often in in the kink world as well like just something just like you peek behind a curtain and something that you thought would be really uncomfortable feels really good um okay so I think this is really exciting and in the industry the term for this is a cook queen uh because we hear quite a lot about cuckolding from the kind of male perspective of being a man whose girlfriend or wife or partner goes out and sleeps with other people and then regales him with the tales, whether that's from a humiliating perspective or just through him wanting to share her with the world and enjoying getting off on her getting off. Like there's lots of different psychological ways from which people approach this topic and it's really interesting. And I think it's really cool to hear this coming from a wife because we don't hear enough examples of this happening the other way and of course it does happen the other way um so first of all how did you phrase this you said without sounding crazy you're not crazy this is totally normal lots of people share this fantasy and this desire and i think it's really cool that you've figured this out about yourself so he's obviously carrying some shame around what he's done because everything we know about relationships and all the kind of messages that we get from society and the media and blah 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 is that if you love someone you only want to kiss be intimate sleep with whatever them and everyone else is irrelevant and so he's struggling with having broken this kind of societal norm um and feeling like he's betrayed your trust but if you're not upset about it he has no reason really to be upset about it either. So first things first, you need to reassure him that everything is okay. And you know, it's quite sweet that he feels so sorry, but at a certain point, it will become a burden <laughs> if he keeps on like being like so downtrodden about it. So you need to reassure him and do it sincerely. And then you need to communicate your desire. There's no two ways about it you have to communicate openly if you're ever going to work through this so reassure him and let him know that hey you know it's all right that that happened and actually it unlocked something in me and i found it really hot or this reinforced kind of feelings i've had before i've had an inkling that i might find something like this sexy and i did and he might be hesitant at first because I actually had a kind of like similar thing in my relationship. Um, not where I cheated, but just when my partner, I said that I wanted to go to a sex party and my partner essentially said, that would be cool because I'd be kind of interested in you sleeping with someone else. I think that would be really hot. And at first I was quite like, ooh, ooh, okay, that's, hmm. Is that weird? Can I do that? Will I be a bad person? And then as soon as I did it, I was like, Oh no, this is good. <laughs> this is a good thing. So he, he will be hesitant at first, but there are kind of baby steps that you can take to, to see if there's something that is of interest to you both. So could you first of all, af 
after laying that out on the table and just telling him how you feel could you start by engaging in some dirty talk for example where either with consent of course like discuss this before going into it but either he could be he you could ask him to tell you exactly what he did whilst you're having sex you could tell him about fantasies that you've had um and just see how that kind of feels getting those words out you could give him permission and uh, to next time he is on a night out to just just kiss someone see how it feels and to tell you about it afterwards you could go out together and see if he would be up for kind of flirting with someone in front of you and there are little ways that you can experiment with this without it having to be like a full like sex thing straight away um and you can use that kind of like sexy fuel that you get just to reignite your sex life as well and to connect over those little moments like make sure that you're giving him enough aftercare after he's engaging in these things for the first time he's going to need a lot of reassurance that you still love him you still think it's hot and you're still okay with everything that you've agreed and if you're not that's also fine but you need to find ways to communicate that sensitively without blame so yeah happy cooking i have a crush on a friend and i feel sometimes she is also in what to do oh okay crushes are so much fun aren't they i feel like a little crush is just one of the one of life's simple pleasures like it can give you so much excitement and you know like having a work crush for example just makes going into the office so much more interesting like knowing that you'll get to see that person and flirt with them like i just love that i actually kind of miss that about working in an office <laughs> i'm basically just at home all the time wanking as a job now no that's true that's an over, that's an oversimplification that's only like 10 percent of the time you have some choices here so sometimes a crush feels so good because it has not been acted on and sometimes bursting that bubble can go in either way it can either be incredibly satisfying and lead to a really fulfilling relationship or you just get over it straight away because as soon as you kind of acted it out all the fun like tension that had built up suddenly dissipates one way that you could proceed would be to start flirting a little bit more not in like an overtly creepy or cringy way but just start flirting as you would with any other crush or person that you fancied and just see to what extent it's reciprocated another option would obviously be to just communicate your feelings and just say hey i'm feeling a little something between us is that something you'd be interested in exploring i think a lot of the time the reason that we don't explore crushes is because we fear losing what we already had but all relationships are changeable and the shape of those relationships does tend to ebb and flow and expand and all of these different things as time goes on anyway so even if you don't do anything it's unlikely that that relationship would stay exactly the same so you might as well take control of the situation and see if there's something more rewarding to be had from that relationship change isn't always something to be scared of I'm new to field and I want to try casual hookups, but I'm worried about how to do it safely. Tips? This is a good question. Okay. So, you've downloaded a dating app, you're looking to hook up, you want to get laid. How do you do it safely? So, first things first, before you even meet up with someone, I think it's really important to understand your own desires and boundaries. And although this will change probably depending on the person and the kind of connection that you have, overall, you probably have an idea of what it is that you're trying to get out of hookups, whether it's literally just pleasure, orgasms, connection. Maybe it's a one-time thing. Maybe you're looking for something a little bit longer term, something kinky, something sensual, something tantric, like whatever it is. 
it's good to have those kind of ideas of like the different things that you're interested in in your mind. And when you're chatting to people, use it as a kind of screening almost to make sure that you're aligned in those interests. And I'm not saying this has to be like an interview or anything like that. I'm just saying it's useful to ask a few kind of questions to find out if someone is on the same level. Trust your gut. I think this is really key and I, I think a lot of people don't do this when it comes to dating and hooking up with people. Like I will always generally get quite a good idea like when I'm thinking about doing something and especially if it's more hookup focused, my body will either be saying like yes, drawing me towards it or I'll be coming up with excuses like oh I haven't made the beds, I haven't shaved, it's like I don't care about those things really, like if I wanted to do the hookup I would do the hookup anyway, so if I'm coming up with those kind of excuses generally for me I know that that is kind of a red flag that perhaps this hookup isn't a good idea, not necessarily because it's unsafe but just because I won't be into it as much as I want to be into it. Get them to send you a picture and I'm not saying like a dick pic or a fanny pic or whatever, like get them to just send you a picture so that you know they're an authentic person. You know, that could either look like exchanging Instagrams if that's something that you wanna do or WhatsApp or just sending a picture within the dating app because you can do that on a lot of dating apps now just to see that they are who they say they are and for a little bit of peace of mind there. When it comes to meeting, I always think it's best to meet in a neutral place. So go for a coffee, go for a walk, go for a drink. Don't go straight around to their house unless you've like, you know, video chatted and you feel really safe. Let someone know where you're going and who you're meeting, let a friend know, uh, your housemate, like whoever it is, just all those kind of like basic, basic safety things to make sure that you're just putting yourself into as safe a situation as is possible in the scenario. When it comes to sexual health and safety around that, always take your own protection when you're hooking up with someone. My personal preference is to also have a conversation before the hookup, especially if I know that I'm gonna be having sex. I will just ask them like, by the way, when was the last time that you got a sexual health screening? Here are my results and I'll send them a link because I usually use like SHL or SH24, I can't remember which one of those it is, the one that, uh, but it's just free at home testing and you get a web page with your name on and all of your results. And if they're not willing to share the same thing back with me, I will definitely use protection, but sometimes I just might not even go through with that hookup. You know, it just depends. If I'm getting bad vibes about someone being cagey about their sexual health status, to me, that kind of suggests that they might be a little bit pushy later down the line about using protection. So sometimes I'll just protect myself completely and just not put myself into the situation. And if you haven't had a conversation about it before you meet, just do it in person. Like, it's better to have those conversations up front. The more you have them, the less awkward that they feel. Okay, this question was from a woman and they say, I want to date a girl, but not sure where to start. And yeah, I, I can I can remember when I felt this way and it's like dating a woman when you've only dated men before feels like it's gonna be a really big deal and really alien and quite scary. And the same as anything else, once you start doing it, you realize that all of those worries were just so blown out of proportion and actually it's not that different from dating someone of any gender because it's all about the person that you date and not about what gender they are. So if you're not sure where to start, just start in the same way that you would if you were looking to date a man or anyone of any gender. So get yourself on dating apps where the kind of people that you want to attract are also residing, set yourself up a profile that says that you're bisexual or queer or gay, whatever it is, and find someone that you find attractive. Don't treat it like an experiment because this person is a real person. It can help, I think, to be quite upfront about the fact that you are feeling some kind of way about not having much experience or about the fact that it's your first time and perhaps you will want to try and find someone who's in a similar situation and also quite freshly dating women. Or on the flip side of that, perhaps you'll want to find someone who is super experienced and is willing to take you under their wing. That could be super nurturing, it could be super hot. Um, 
I think being honest about these things is always the best way but I understand that can feel quite vulnerable and quite difficult sometimes and it might put a few people off knowing that you haven't dated a woman before but they're not going to be the right person for you so it doesn't matter. Basically just don't overthink it and you will be surprised at how quickly it becomes normal so just try and throw yourself in there and find someone that you find attractive and just take it from there. Okay the next question is can you give me some advice for transitioning a relationship from open to polyamorous? So for anyone who's watching this and wondering what the difference between those two things is, generally an open relationship will focus on the primary couple relationship and as a unit you will have different kind of entanglements, dates, sex, flirting, whatever it is outside of that relationship but your focus is still on the couple and you know sometimes those people you'll be having like threesomes or perhaps it'll just be like individuals you're dating separately whatever it is that kind of all falls under that open umbrella polyamorous is more about being open to having multiple intimate deep meaningful connections whether that's romantic or sexual or kind of some version of a platonic plus a bit of extra relationship um and there are lots of different structures within that. Um, so this is actually something that I've done. So I kind of feel like I'm, I know where you're coming from with this question. Uh, and for me, the key was taking it at a pace that felt really natural. I think when you have this idea that maybe you wanna try being polyamorous or you do identify with that label, you can feel like, okay, I've figured this out, so now I need to get on it straight away and it's a rush and I need to make sure that I'm cultivating deep loving relationships straight away and I need to have multiple partners. Like, no, take it at your own pace and don't force it. And take it at a pace that feels, if you're still in that couple and, moving towards that polyamorous why do i keep doing this <laughs> polyamorous approach to relationships you're gonna need to do a lot of open communicating and i mean a lot you're gonna have to get used to talking about your feelings and really examining where any feelings of discomfort come from because we're all human and even if you're not prone to jealousy uh, you will probably encounter some uncomfortable feelings along the way and feelings that you probably haven't felt before because this is a new situation and you're kind of throwing out all of the rules of monogamous relationships and you're writing your own rules for how to um, conduct yourself in a relationship. So have regular check-ins and make sure that you're getting everything out on the table and you're giving each other equal space to be able to voice any concerns, any points of excitement and to just keep each other up to date with how your hearts are feeling and how your minds are feeling and how you're coping with things. And as you're transitioning into this as well, I think it's important if you are feeling that really exciting new relationship energy with a new partner to not forget about your existing partners and to make sure that you're still tending to those relationships with with care and with love and with effort. And it can be a difficult balancing act. You know, there are only so many hours in the day, there are only so many days in a week, and you kind of need to have a thoughtful approach to how much time you're spending with each partner rather than just kind of getting carried away and giving all your time to the new people that you might be entangled with. And I think another thing that I always found interesting in my relationship was we were we, we set up lots of kind of like rules and boundaries in the beginning when we were first opening up and actually a way that a lot of these boundaries and walls got taken down was because one of us would overstep the boundary just in a little way just a small way like for example we had a rule around no dates on Sundays that was our day and then one day it just happened someone just made a date on a Sunday and you know what no one died <laughs> it was fine uh, and we got rid of that rule and we realized you know the thing the reason we had that rule is just because we were conscious of protecting our quality time together but we can have that quality time whatever day of the week we want to have it as long as we set that time to do it so I'm not saying go out there and break all the rules and break your partner's trust and boundaries I'm just saying that sometimes it just 
it does take a little push over that kind of line to figure out that, hey, we can do this, this is okay. Uh, and sometimes that's all right. Okay, guys, we're gonna leave it there for today. Thank you so much for submitting those questions. I really enjoy it when we get a chance to have these kind of more in-depth conversations. I say conversation as if it doesn't isn't just me talking at you for however long this is. Um, but I think I'd like to make this a regular thing. So if that's of interest to you, drop me a comment below. Leave me a question if you want. If not, follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And I will be doing regular Q&A boxes over there but yeah thank you so much for watching this please if you enjoyed it give me a like subscribe to my channel as i said i did another one of these videos where i'm oversharing personal things about myself so if you're nosy then watch that one <laughs> yeah thank you so much for being here today and i will see you again very soon bye